Welcome to collision theory. We know that during a chemical reactions, atoms are rearranged. And that has to do with bonds being broken and new bonds being formed. Collision theory is going to give us more information about how particles need to interact to cause a reaction between them and get that rearrangement of atoms. Let's look at the reaction between substances A and B to form two particles of AB. If we draw what the particles look like for this equation, we can clearly see that when a particle of A combines with a particle of B, we get two particles of AB. So this shows us that the atoms are being rearranged. But something had to happen between the molecule of A and the molecule of B so that their atoms were able to rearrange. Something had to happen there. And that something is a collision. And that brings us to our key ideas for collision theory. The first major idea here is that for a chemical reaction to occur, the reacting particles must collide. That's the first part of collision theory. For a reaction to even be possible, the particles have to physically collide with each other. The second part of this is that not all collisions are successful. Now what does successful mean in this context? Successful means that the collision results in new products being formed, or in other words, results in a reaction. So we're going to explore this second point a little bit more. If not all collisions are successful, why are some collisions successful? Or what determines if a collision is successful? Because that's what's going to be of interest to us when we talk about reactions. And there are actually two criteria that a collision has to have to be successful. The first one is that the particles need to have proper orientation. Now what does proper orientation refer to? It basically means the direction in which they collide. So let's look at three examples of possible orientations. Here are three possibilities for the way particles could line up with each other. There's obviously an infinite number of ways that particles hit each other, but let's just look at these examples. In the first case, the molecule of A collides with the molecule of B in this direction, and there's no reaction. In the second case, they collide end to end. Again, no reaction. In the last case, they're lined up with each other so that one atom of A hits the other atom of B, and the second atom of A hits the second atom of B. In this case, we do have a reaction. So this proper orientation refers to the way the particles are lined up with each other when they collide. The second criteria that particles need to meet in order to have a successful collision is that they need to have enough energy. And for particles, this comes in the form of speed, or kinetic energy. The particles need to have enough speed, or kinetic energy, when they collide to have a successful collision. The particles that collide need to have a minimum amount of energy. So they could have more than enough energy and that would be fine. But there's a minimum amount of energy that they need to have when they collide for the successful collision. And this minimum amount of energy is called the activation energy. And activation energy is represented with the symbol E sub capital A. This is the symbol for activation energy. Now what is this activation energy used for? Well, the initial energy that they have when they collide, that amount of energy, that activation energy, is used to break the existing bonds and to form the new bonds, resulting in the rearrangement of atoms. Now it's really important to stress here that for a collision to be successful, it has to have both of these criteria, not just one or the other. It has to hit in the proper direction and have enough energy at the same time. It's also helpful to note here that these successful collisions are sometimes referred to as effective collisions. So if you see that term pop up somewhere, you should know it's talking about successful collisions that result in a reaction. Now that we know about this successful collision business, let's look at what happens with our original reaction that we were looking at between A and B to form 2AB. Note how we see the molecules of A and B lined up with each other when they collide, and then we see the products on the other side but there's something in between that happens here. The moment of their collision is important, and it's actually a little bit of a transition stage that it goes through. So there's a transition stage that exists where the bonds are being broken and reformed. The atoms are being rearranged. And this transition stage looks a little bit like this. Basically, it's the moment of impact where the atoms are all sort of stuck to each other in one big blob. And this is a very high energy state, okay? This transition stage is very unstable, very high energy, and it has a special name. It's called the activated complex. So the activated complex is a high energy, unstable arrangement of atoms right when they collide 
before they finish rearranging into the new products. That wraps up our lesson on collision theory. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.